Capital investment decisions are some of the most important decisions that managers have to make. All managers across all types of organizations must make capital investment decisions at some point. From the smallest of the business, just run from your kitchen table, to the largest corporation, from the governmental entities to not-for-profits, every single one of them at some point will have managers that need to make capital investment decisions. This lecture is going to focus on an approach and analysis of capital investment decisions. So first of all, let's discuss what is capital investment. Well, capital investment is an investment into assets. So capital means money invested into assets, but not just any assets. These are resources that are used for a long period of time. In business, a long period of time means greater than a year. We're not talking about your day-to-day -day operations. When we talk about capital investments and capital assets, we're talking about big ticket items. Capital investments are for the long-term sustainability of the organization. A business is going to use capital investments for some important reasons. First of all, for innovation, new equipment, new software, for becoming a more efficient business, for expanding, opening new locations, for reducing obsolescence of the organization. It's a key strategy to keeping the business going for the long haul. Capital investments are for sustainability and improvement of the organization. Again, capital investments are about investing in big ticket items, not your day-to-day -day operating type of decisions like hiring people or buying supplies. We're talking about big ticket stuff. Because we're spending a lot of money when we talk about capital investment, uh, we usually have a capital budgeting committee. So the capital budgeting committee is usually comprised of uh, an expert in, in capital in investments, maybe some people in accounting and finance, but you're also going to have people from other parts of the organization that understand operations. And typically you might have the CFO or some other high level executive uh, that's part of the committee. So first of all, what is the process that the capital budget committee is going to make? Now, first of all, remember that capital investments are important for managers. If you're a manager, you want your idea, your project, your expansion to occur for your area. If, that, if that's the case, if, you're, if your project gets chosen, then that could be uh, you know, a big deal for you as a manager and for your department. And the Capital Budgeting Committee is looking for these ideas that will help the business grow, that will help the business succeed in the long run. So they're really looking for managers to step up and bring really good ideas to them. So first of all, they're going to have managers from different parts of the organization bring in their proposals. In other words, that's what they're identifying possible investments. So managers from HR, from operations, from customer service, from any area really, the managers that have ideas for expansion, innovation, or growth will bring their ideas as a possible proposal. Then the budgeting committee is going to look at this and, and estimate the impact on the company. They're going to analyze each of these proposals. Then they're going to do what they call capital rationing. So capital rationing means that they have only so much money to put forth towards capital projects they're going to decide if they're going to put all the money on one project or they're going to split it up between different projects. They're going to ration out the available funds. And then they have something that's very important called a post audit. What that means is that a lot of times managers go into this committee and they really want their proposal to get selected. The reason they want their proposal to get selected is it can be really uh, beneficial to them as an individual manager moving on up the ladder. It can also be beneficial to their department. So there could be a potential for managers being a little enthusiastic, a little aggressive with their estimates for their, the proposed impact their project will have. For that reason, managers need to know there will be a post audit. So if a manager says our project is going to bring a 15% return, they need to understand that after the project is completed, they're going to review the results and see if it brought a 15% return. Let's look at this analysis element to capital budgeting committee. So when the capital budgeting committee decides to uh, analyze the proposals that come in, they're going to consider different questions like how much funds are available 
Do they have enough funding for all the proposals or are they going to have to ration out the funds? How expensive are the proposals that are being brought to the table? They're going to look at the risk of each. So there's a couple of risks that you have with capital budgeting. One is that the proposed project is not going to bring in the returns that were promised by the managers. That is one of the risks and also there's the risk that you missed out on other proposals. So if I take proposal from manager A over manager B and manager A's project doesn't bring in the return that was expected, then we missed out on manager B's proposal. Remember, once the money is invested in these projects, it's stuck in that project. So that's one of the, the risks there. We can't like go back and get the money again. We've already implemented the project. We have to look at the relationship with other projects. Some projects can be beneficial to each other. And finally, we have to look at the ratio analysis. We're going to look at different financial ratios. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on the ratio analysis. But keep in mind, there's both qualitative and quantitative analysis by the budgeting committee. What that means is the quantitative side is the ratio analysis. Quantitative meaning to do with quantities or do with numbers. But there's a qualitative element too. The qualitative element is all about whether or not the proposals make sense for other reasons. For example, safety or within the strategy of the organization or uh, does the pro proposal work from a public relations standpoint or from a community standpoint. So in other words, there's things that are not numbers related that the managers are going to have to consider too. The first ratio we'll look at is called the cash payback period. Let's look at an example in an Excel spreadsheet. So the idea of cash payback period is basically how long it takes for an investment to pay for itself. So in this case we have a factory and they're considering manufacturing either skateboards or a scooter product. So what we have provided below for both skateboard and scooters are the potential cash flows. These are called net cash flows. So a net cash flow can come from one of two ways. It can be a savings. For example, you're saving money by buying and investing in a new delivery truck because the delivery truck that's new is more efficient and you're saving on maintenance and fuel. That's one way that cash flows can come in. Or another cash way a cash flow can come in is from a different revenue source, a new revenue source. So for example, if you were a restaurant selling sandwiches and you decide to invest in a pizza oven, now you're gonna have revenue from pizza, so you would have a new revenue source. This example, we have an investment in a factory of a million dollars to create a new revenue source from either skateboards or scooters. These are the potential cash flows that we expect for the next five years. We expect this project to be about a five-year project. So the cash payback period we're going to see is just how long it takes for each of these investments to pay for themselves. So let's look at the skateboards first. First of all, notice that between these two proposed projects to either make skateboards or scooters in our factory, that the skateboard cash flows is going to be very consistent, the same amount every year, whereas the scooters are going to bring more money, more cash flows in early years, and then less later years. So the cash flows are going to be different. When we look at the skateboards, we see that the cash flows are going to be the same every year. So we can use a formula for this. We can take the initial investment of a million dollars and we can divide it by the expected annual cash flows. So looking at this uh, example, we see that the skateboards have an initial investment of a million dollars, 325,000 as your annual cash flows, so 3.08, a little over three years for the skateboards to pay for themselves, for the skateboard investment to pay for itself. As you might expect, the shorter cash payback period, the better. The faster you get a project to pay for itself, the better. Let's compare that to the scooters. Now the scooters, again, we can't use the same formula as we did before because each year we have a different expected cash inflow. So we have to follow a different strategy. So we'll start out with the initial investment and we see that the first year we have 560000 and we have to ask ourselves a question, is that going to be enough to pay for the initial investment? 
Well, the answer is no. 560000 is not enough to pay for the initial investment. So therefore, we subtract. We have a remaining amount of an investment of 440000 remaining. So then we look at the next year, 390000 We ask a question. Does the 390000 cover the remaining 440000 If the answer is no, we subtract. So now we have 50000 remaining. So then we go to the next year. We ask the same question. Is 350000 in year three enough to cover the remaining 50000 The answer is yes. So when the answer is yes, we divide. When we divide 50000 by 350000 we get 0.14. So that means we took one whole year, two whole years, and, and then 0.14 of the third year. So we took 2.14 years to pay back the initial investment with the cash inflows. When we compare scooters to skateboards, the project for scooters pays for itself a lot faster than the skateboards. So some of the good things and bad things about the cash payback period. Well, first of all, what's good about it is it's simple and quick. You can see how easy it is to make that calculation. But the problem is that cash payback ignores cash flow after payback. In other words, after the project's paid for itself, it might still be bringing cash in. But cash payback period isn't using those additional cash flows. Also, it doesn't consider profitability. It just looks at cash flows. And it doesn't consider the time value of money, meaning that the 350000 that the project makes in year one is considered the same as the 350000 the project makes in year five. But we, we should all be aware that when you receive cash earlier, it's got a higher value than if you have to wait for it. Waiting for cash makes the cash less useful because we can't take advantage of it until later. So cash payback period is a good initial step in analysis. In the next lecture, we'll look at some additional ratios that can be useful in considering our different proposed projects.